Here's how you can become the coolest person on the block by building a device to make it rain candy. I started this project with a trip to my home improvement store for these PVC parts. I'm going to get the hard stuff out of the way, so I'll measure different lengths of Schedule 40 PVC pipe and start cutting. I'm mainly using 2 inch and 1 inch pipe for the cannon and 1 and 1 quarter inch pipe for the detonator. A chop saw worked well for me, but I had to be careful because sometimes things like that happen. All the pipe is now cut to the lengths I want, and before I glue the pieces in place permanently, I'm going to dry fit them all together to see how they fit. My design is for two separate 12 inch air tanks joined together with 1 inch pipe and connecting to an inline sprinkler valve. I'm also going to add a manual ball valve and an end cap that I'll thread a pneumatic adapter onto later. This 90 degree elbow will be my base for a 2 foot tube of 2 inch PVC pipe that will act as my cannon barrel. It's looking really good and I'm very happy with the design so it's time to glue it up. I'll use some purple primer to get the PVC ready for gluing, making sure to put a coating on all the parts that will be connected. Now I've finished gluing it back together using PVC cement and I'm adding some thread tape to these connector nipples to ensure an airtight seal. I expect this system will be pressurized around 135 psi and this should help prevent leaks. It's time for a pressure test. I'm going to start around 60 psi and test for leaks then slowly work my way up over 100. I've closed off the manual valve and disconnected the air hose and I don't hear any air leaking so I'm going to test the sprinkler valve release by shorting it out on this 9 volt battery. It's actually a 24 volt valve but a single 9 volt battery seems to work fine for this purpose. And the valve works great so it's time to wire up the detonator. I'll take the 1 and 1 quarter inch cap and drill a hole just big enough to insert a momentary switch and then I'll drill a 1 8 hole in the bottom cap to feed my wire through. This is doorbell wire and I'll tie it in a knot to prevent it from pulling back through the cap again. Now I can add the 1 and 1 quarter inch by 4 inch pipe body to the base and then prep the wires for a good connection. I'll wire the momentary switch in series with the battery and sprinkler valve, then give it a quick test to verify it's all working correctly. Perfect, it's all working great, so I'll secure the switch and tuck the battery and wires into the detonator body. Now I'm wrapping the wire around some scrap 1 inch pipe to give it a neat coiled look. Then I'll get to work on a wad for the barrel. This is the piece that will push the candy up and out and I'm going to make it out of these plastic cups. I'll cut the bottom quarter inch off the bigger cup and then shave about a quarter inch from the top of a 3 ounce cup. When joined together they make a perfect fit into the 2 inch barrel and when it's time to load the candy I'll push them to the bottom with a makeshift ramrod. These are super cheap and surprisingly durable but still gentle enough to convert this cannon into an epic water balloon launcher. Look for that in another video. Alright, this system is looking pretty good, but I want it to look amazing, so I'll clean off the UPC stickers with some adhesive remover and then spray paint it red and black. Everything is back together and I'm really happy with how this is looking. The daunting question now is, will it work or was this all for nothing? Time to test it out. The plastic cups are in place and I'm using these jelly candies for practice. It's ready to go in 3, 2, 1, FIRE! Amazing! These candies shot up around 100 feet in the air and completely covered the backyard, making an exciting candy hunt for my kids and a hit novelty at the birthday party. Well, I'll call that an epic success. If you like this project, perhaps you'll like some of my others. Check them out at thekingofrandom.com.